You're listening to Oilers Nation Radio, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. One hour of straight hockey talk with Dan, Rick, Tyler, and Bag Milk starts now. Oilers Nation Radio episode something something. 232. Tuesday. 232. First Tuesday episode back of the new season. We're getting going on twice a week. Enjoy the free content. You better download it or we'll just play it twice. Today, as always, we start off with a thank you to our friends at Oodle Noodle and DoorDash for making this all possible. Oodle Noodle, new location here on the West End. If you're out in my side of the city or if you're in Calgary, new location opening there very, very soon. It may be Tuesday, but we're going to start off the way we always do. Tyler, what do you got for a delicious debate today? The Oilers started the season one and one. So I will ask you this. Are you more concerned about anything after the first two games of the season? I'm going to start with you, Tyler, because you're the one yesterday on real life where you seem to have more concerns than Wanya and I did. So I'm going to start with you. Uh, yeah, like I, I think I'm actually a little bit and it's, it's very little cause I fully recognize sample size and all that, but I am a little bit more worried about the blue line than I was at uh, the start of the season. Like I just, you know, Ryan Murray's had a couple of nice moments. He had a nice assist and he made that through the legs play in the first game that got everybody talking, but like, you know, he hasn't been great. Barry hasn't looked good. Bouchard hasn't looked great. And he's a guy who people wanted to see take a step forward. Like the blue line. Some of the pieces that we thought would be okay, or maybe even take take a step forward. I'm now kind of sitting there being like, Ooh, what if they're not? So I'm not like pulling any alarms or anything like that, but I'm, I'm mildly more concerned about the blue line. Even two games in. Well, yeah, I I think, I don't think Tyler's wrong in, in asking the questions just because you feel like that step forward just should have continued from the playoffs, not, feel like we took a couple steps back as a defense and it's but just they take all that time off. You got to give them time yeah. to get going here. Of course, but that's what preseason should be for. And for me, the issues are that a guy like Ryan Murray should not be dragging an Evan Bouchard down. And that's what it feels like. You've got, you've got these guys that just feel like they're not, they're not even just at even keel anymore. Like Tyler said. So I, I just, yeah, I I'm the defense makes me ask questions that breakout being, you know, the, of the ilk of handling grenades seems frustrating to me, even two games into the season. I watched the Toronto Maple Leafs lose to the Arizona Coyotes last night. And it just kind of, <laughs> as I was watching that, it just kind of gave me a little perspective that it's October. Everybody's sloppy. Shit is weird. Bob McKenzie always says, don't really pay attention to anything until November. And I'm kind of, that's kind of where I'm at. So I think it's going to take time to get going. The preseason, nobody cares. Yeah, that's supposed to be where they work out the kinks and the rust, but come on, as if the guys are actually giving it even 80% effort. Rick? I'm right there with you. It's uh, not till not till Thanksgiving do you get overly worried about anything. Even if I want to try and like pick this apart, it's just, it's two games in. It's the first game at home. The second game is versus Calgary. It's, it is what it is. It's not that big of a deal. Even in, in, in preseason, you're not playing the, their best team, right? How, much, how often are you out there playing their third stringers and fourth stringers and guys that aren't going to be there? So this is way too small of a sample size. I think people are, if you, if you're getting upset about this already, you're, this is going to be really tough for you because nothing goes straight up in the, in, into the air. It's two games. Like, calm down. Yeah, but but this is like not getting up. You to not get upset about it and still point out like, ooh, that doesn't look good. Like, they're two games into the year. They've spotted three goalies to the other team twice, and the only reason they came back in the other game is because their power play was sick. And I'm not one to knock well, them for having a good team. power play. That that's the result of having some of the most skilled players in the league. But like, they haven't been good at five on five in either game. So like, you know. That's why I called them a yeah. Dave Tippett looking team is because this is how they were looking last year at this time. Well, and Tyler, you did say that you didn't care if they made the playoffs as long as they had a 40% power play. So maybe I shouldn't complain. <laughs> <laughs> Liam. Uh, I think with the blue line, it's kind of weird too. Cause it's not like there was a lot of guys rotating through throughout the preseason too, right? Like it was like Sam Marukov, Demers and, uh, What's the other guy called from Bakersfield? Vincent De Hane? Vinny Darren. Yeah. Yep. But he didn't yeah. play. He had a he had a busted hand most of the oh, time. But like that was kind of the only guys that were around. So this blue line should be familiar with each other. Like, the only new addition is Ryan Murray right now. So they should be playing better. I think the thing that worries me the most, so 
is just the fact they haven't got away from conceding the first goal again. Like we've kind of joked about it before in other episodes where it's like, oh, they've just always done this. It's like, well, when is it ever going to end? Because when the playoffs come around, you can't just keep giving up goals to better teams. Like we're giving up goals to Vancouver three in a row. We were now 0-3 and, and granted they've kind of been doing their own thing where they're just blowing leads every game anyway. But it'd be nice to see them just take control of a game and just play the way we kind of expect them to play and see guys play five on five and on the lines that they're supposed to and not just see McDavid and Drysaddle get thrown together because we put ourselves in a massive hole again. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I just, I've been, I watched the NFL and the NFL has been, it's been upside down this year. There's been way, way less points. All the big players aren't playing like the big players right now. It's, it's really funky out there. So maybe I'm just going to taste of it that way. I just two games in it's first game is, you know, home opener that you get a little, you get a little jacked up. Next thing you know, you got Calgary on Saturday night. It's another, you know, maybe these are like little minor excuses or something like that. It just, I think something like tonight, you'll start to see what the, what this team is. But like, if just, you're only, I have a, I have a real hard time getting upset about the first two games of the year. Like, I mean, look at what's going on. The Wild are zero and three to start the season. Toronto lost to Arizona last night. Like, there are so many teams that are not just the Oilers that are really sloppy right now that you expect to kind of do something. And I, I don't know. I just have a hard time getting too worked up about the first two games of the year. It just. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just think that it's going to take more than two games or a handful of practices to get themselves going and running. I'm just having a hard time caring. Oh uh, yeah, that's fair. Bag milk, I guess. And that's like, I think it's just like Tyler and I are on like a one on the care scale where you're at a zero, you know, yeah. it's, it's, I don't think I'm panicking by any means. I think what, what I think has happened too and maybe we've missed it just because of where the episodes have fallen is we're going after the goalie as a fan base when we, we should be talking about the defense oh and anybody just that's fyi thing. that was that was the same last year too but because yep. it was mike smith everyone did it anyways yep he didn't 100%. help himself at all but a lot of those issues were the same as we have right and that's, now and that's exactly it issues. and that's the same feedback i think i would give jack campbell is he's not helping himself at any point here but but the fan base needs to relax on the goalie and maybe look at the defense if you're going to be concerned about anything it's the defense to be fair by this point to, last by this point last I was listening season to Mike 1260 smith. yesterday and they were talking about goalie controversies already like <laughs> this, this is might be in a good this might be in this might be in a good way, though. It's yeah. not about Campbell falling yeah. down. There's it's about no Skinner controversy. It's I think they're about just having a adequate great thing to have this controversy. This would be great if, if, if Skinner pulled himself like up to, have, to the level of Campbell. That'd be great. I want two goalies for once. Like, I don't see a controversy here. I just think well, this I, is yeah, like I, the temperament. Like, in some of the texts that were coming in on 1260, people need to get the fuck outside. <laughs> get some vitamin D, get that sun. Jeez, in I don't get it. I, I like, man. When I think the co- the controversy or whatever, I don't think of it as Campbell falling down the, the mountain. I see it as Skinner moving up the mountain. And then it's a controversy. That's a really good problem to have. Now I, now based on the text, I'm assuming um, it was the other way around. But when I think of goalie controversy in a situation we have right now, or where we could really soon have, it's a, it's a really big bonus for the team. Yeah. For me, like when I look at things to like raise an eyebrow to, I think raising an eyebrow at the blue line right now is fair. Their five on five play is fair, but the goaltending is just like, I don't know. That's a bit of a stretch right now, this early in the season. Like you talked about preseason, not meaning a lot. I think for goalies, it's a big adjustment going into the regular season as well. So that's one where like, if you're complaining about Jack Campbell right now, I don't even know what to tell you. Like that's just so far out there in my opinion. So hold on. Well, what do you think, think about Skinner? Skinner? What do you think about Skinner streak though? forever? <laughs> the Skinner shutout streak? I don't. You don't think that's going to continue forever either? It might. Are we not going to overreact on the positive too? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. He was lights out. Never going to let in another goal. I just think the reactions on either side are just bananas right now. I don't understand any of it. I'm like, I'm watching some of the stuff that's going on in the comment section at weathersnation.com and on Twitter and in our mentions, I'm like, yep. Two games. Not great. They still won the first one, almost came back and got themselves into the second one. I, I just, I guess I'm nowhere near the panic button or I'm, I'm below a zero Dan on my, there you go. 
care out of 10 right now. Like, dude, I'm actually on the positive side of things just because of what you saw with Skinner. Like he's, he's continually takes steps forward in his career. And I just think he's such a uh, solid square to the puck goaltender. I think we have, I think we have something here. Yeah, I'm more confident in our goaltending tandem this year than I have been in quite some time, at least the last three <laughs> years. And that's not to take a shot. At go Smith back. Again. When was the last time? When was the last time you felt better about our goalie tandem than what we have right now? Buddy, I'm the one that came up with that t-shirt that there's 99 problems and a goalie ate one for Scrivens and Fast. So I'm not exactly the best <laughs> scouting of <a> goaltender, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Whoopsies. <Wait. laughs> but no, I just, that's I don't, excellent. I don't know. I, I'm, I find the concern interesting, I guess. I just, I don't share it. I, I can't see it. It's a, I was it's mad. A, oh man. I was it's mad on Saturday. By, I was just going to say that's a great point by Rick, that our tandem is as good as we've probably had in a long time, just from a confidence standpoint. Bring back the t-shirt. Is that what you're saying, Dan? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. I, well, I, have a qu- I have a quick thing. Like how I know what I, I'm do- I like Campbell a lot. And I think looking back at the goals and maybe I'm wrong. Like, I feel like none of them were really even massively his fall at all at the weekend. Like the first one was kind of a weird tip, which he's forced to kind of readjust quickly. And he got an awkward rebound let out. And then you have the Kulak fall. Um, what was it? The fourth one where Poyavi chases a guy out from behind the net, which was just kind of a weird play to do. And then guy comes across maybe that one, but even the Murray thing too, like the puck bounces right over his stick. It just kind of felt like there was no bounces going his way at all. Like, so I just think to criticize him for uh, the performance, like obviously getting pulled 12 minutes into the, your first battle of Murray is not ideal by, by any means, but I feel like it was more of a, sacrificial pull for Woodcroft more than to the, like say like Campbell, you weren't good. It was more of the defense was not good. That's, in how, front I, of them. that's how I felt about it too. I, that was a mercy pull for Campbell. That's like, try to switch things up, try and change the energy because like the Oilers were so well, which one you, there were three, you guys at Rogers place on Saturday, right? Yeah. Yep. They were so flat to start that game. And like, what's Campbell supposed to do? Maybe we need to get a Schmitty in the back. Screaming at people from the yeah. tunnel. <laughs> well, I, maybe that's what we need. But like, what did you guys see at Rogers' place on Saturday? Was it as flat in the building as it looked on TV? And again, for me, like part of the concern, or like the reason I'm at, even at a one on the concern thing is like, okay, home opener and a game against Calgary, and the Oilers had like no physical pulse for the start of those games. Like they just seem to love doing the flybys. Like Warren Fogel doesn't seem to be very interested in playing physical hockey right now. Ryan McLeod is flyby city. Doesn't want to throw a body check at all. And it's like, Hey, it's early in the season. Show some juice, show some jam. Like I can understand if it's game 43 against Minnesota and you're like, ah, XL energy center or whatever the fuck they play. And like, ah, it's not going, it's not my night. I'm not going to lay a big hit, but like early in the year, home crowd sold out bar and like, let's go, let's play like a physical brand of hockey a little bit. And there's not doing it. Yeah, I was going to say, like, bag milk, you know, the the first period, it felt like the defense was a bunch of passengers. We had a good flourish against their team in our in their offensive zone, and then they'd come down, and it was just like, okay, I guess we just forgot to play hockey. So, yeah, it was, it was exasperating from up top in Rogers. I just, all of you, everything you guys are saying is right. I just, you know. Eh. Game two. Eh. 80 more to go. Like if, if we're doing this next Tuesday and there's, you know, there's three games this week that the Oilers have to be competitive in and win. like they played Buffalo tonight. They've got Carolina on Thursday. They got San uh, St. Louis on Saturday. Like if we come back next Tuesday and we're talking about three more flat games then maybe my opinion changes, but right now I just, I can't, I can't get there yet. Like, I mean, like I said, Minnesota, Oh, and three Tampa one and two Toronto loses to Arizona last night. Vancouver hasn't won a fucking game there. It's just teams. We expect more of are kind of spinning their wheels a little bit. And I don't think it's as crazy that it's happening here at Edmonton as some folks may suggest. That's all. Vancouver is absolutely imploding. I don't know if you guys saw this stat. They're terrible. They're the first team in NHL history to start a year 0-3 after having multi-goal leads in each game. 
Well, it's also <laughs> amazing that JT Miller has been on the ice for every single goal. Yeah, up until last, until night. last yeah. night. Yeah, until last night. Oh, he finally got off the schneid, did he? <laughs> yeah, I think he <laughs> was think out there for at least. Like, he was on the bench, right? One, though. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> ah, shit. Anyway, I want to know if you are nervous. Some of the boys a little bit nervous. What's your numbers on the scale here, boys? I'm at a negative. I'm in the negative out of 10. Dan? Just that one. Just that one enough because of the Jack Campbell noise. Rick? I'm a negative, man. I see only, I see only positive and blue skies out there. Amen. Liam? Like half. I just think it's bad habits <laughs> and I want to see it get changed. Like it's just, just stupid things. You just wanted to leave me out of my own. about the cheeseburger price. That's all. That is true. So I, I'm going to the game tonight and... I'm disappointed. I can't have a cheeseburger. Well, you could. It's I just, I don't know if you're going to afford it. I just, I was going to say, I don't know if you could pay your rent after uh, <laughs> Tyler. What's your number out of 10? Not the real life number. Your nervous number. 1.5. <laughs> so despite having a couple of concerns, eh, you know, I want to know what your number is out of 10. Not the real life number. Your nervous number. So hit us up, ON Radio Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, looking ahead at tonight, Liam's going to the game against the Saab race. What are we expecting from the Buffalo Sabres? They're a different team. Jack Campbell stink might still be lingering. We don't know yet. What do you guys expect? I, I also, if I can I be honest, I just learned today that Craig Anderson still plays in the NHL. I found that to be amazing. I, I oh. that guys, I, I need him to hang on. He's one of the last players in this league that is older than me. I need him to play <laughs> as long as possible. What are you guys expecting from the Sabres tonight? Uh, I think a pretty competitive game. Like what did they lose to Florida the other night? Four, three. Like, I think the Sabres team is young and ambitious. So like, they've actually got a pretty decent forward group. Like, I don't think they're going to be, huge threats as the season go on. They feel like a team that's going to be streaky with just how young they are, but I think they actually have quite a lot of talent. The Oilers should be able to handle them fairly easily, especially with the blue line isn't the best. Like Mateus Samuelson, who's what played 60 games in the NHL and Darlene and power. Like it's nothing too special outside of those three, but I think they'll, they'll do okay, but the Oilers should be able to handle them perfectly fine. A lot of to take talent. on the Weathers Nation every day today. Yeah, just a lot of young talent. Like you look at that group, like the blue line they have could legitimately be one of the best blue lines in the league in three or four years. Like Samuelson, Darlene, Owen Power. Those are three leg- guys who could be like not just top four demon, like top pairing demon, right? And the forward group, yeah, like every line has a young player where you kind of go like, oh, damn, oh, damn, oh, damn. But none of them have played against Connor McDavid. A lot of them have barely played a season in the NHL. I just think the Sabres team, like Liam said, I agree. They're probably going to be inconsistent throughout the year. There'll be nights where they're just humming and flying around and the young guys have it. And there'll be nights where they get taught a tough lesson of what it's like to play an 82 game NHL season. And I think tonight might just be one of those nights where, you know, a group, their oldest defenseman's 28 and it's Ilya Labushkin. Everyone else is younger than that. So I just think it could be a blue line that gets a little exposed tonight against some really good offensive players. What I will say though, when you're walking through that, my first thought is from an Oilers perspective, you cannot look at a team like that and just think it's going to be a cakewalk. Cause those are the ones where I, nobody would admit it last night in Toronto probably, but I'm guessing that's what happened a little bit against the coyotes. I don't want that in a game like this for the Oilers. Yeah. This is one where the Oilers need to go out. Like you said, a lot of these guys haven't played Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl or the Vander Kane and all of them together at some points. They need to go out and flex. This is one of those games where they're the better team on paper. Go show it on the ice. Dan, what do you expect? I'm calling a point night. I think it's going to be a night where we just go out and have some fun. And this team, you know, after two games of of slow start or no start and uh, you know, a quick pull of the goalie playing in front of Skinner. I think that they're probably going to, the, the Sabres will probably get a couple goals on Skinner. And uh, yeah, I would say it's probably going to be five or six goals for the Oilers. I think tonight point night is my prediction. Rick, what are you expecting? Sort of the same thing, but for a lot of different reasons, not just because point night is point. It's, I just feel like, you know what, they had excuses kind of for not being a hundred percent, focused on games in the first two games. He had the 
home opener, which is what it is. Then you got Calgary. It is what it is. This is a game on a Tuesday versus Buffalo. There is nothing else around you. There's no reason not to be hundred percent focused for this. They know they don't haven't looked too good in the, in the first two games. They saw what Toronto did last night. They know they can't go ahead and do that. You've got two guys, at least in the dressing room, are going to make sure everybody knows that um, we can't go out there and do what we did in the first two nights. And I think you'll see them play their potential tonight. And it's more about what the Oilers do than the Sabres do. And yeah, I, I can see a lot of goals coming tonight. Tyler, you got a cheeky little grin on your face. What's so exciting about Tuesdays that may be distracting? Taco Tuesday, always <laughs> exciting for me. Well, today on today <laughs> on our live show, I I told Liam, I was like, there's no way they can come out slow three games in a row, right? And Liam was like, ah. And then it got me thinking. I was like, man, like, Rick, I get what you're saying. Like, home opener, Battle of Alberta, there's distractions. But I just said that. I'm like, man, if you couldn't get up for those games, like, how are we expecting you to give a shit no, about Tuesday about, against Buffalo? I don't think it's about getting up. I don't think it's about getting up for those games. It's about, like... Just being maybe like a little too grip the stick too tight, a little too jacked up, a little too whatever. Um, there's just none of that today. There's no reason for that today. Uh, there's yeah, there is not not an excuse uh, built in for this one, and I I see things being a little bit different, and maybe that's a little more of the hope side of things. But I just think I think that like for me, it's you know when you come out against a team like Buffalo and a younger team and you play the system that Woodcroft has in place. We saw it on that power play. You know, that those kinds of plays should work pretty well against a younger team like Buffalo. We've experienced it during our decade of darkness when, you know, the young guys could get exposed quite heavily by the, the systematic teams of even the Detroit Red Wings at that time, uh, you know, would beat up on us, but like the Chicago Blackhawks, it would absolutely decimate us at times. So yeah, I just, I think that, that Rick's right in, you know, feeling like that this should just be a game that they come out and play their system and that rewards them with point night. I hope they come out with like, and I hope this, it makes sense when I say it, but like they come out with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder in this mm-hmm. game in the sense that it's just like, fuck, we've had two bad starts at home to start the season. Nobody's going to say otherwise mm-hmm. get pissed off about it. Like we're all annoyed about it. I know those guys in the room are, they're not happy losing or starting slow or hanging their goalie out to dry. Dry Saddle said it after the game. We're not blaming Jack for anything. We were flat. We sucked more or less. I'm paraphrasing. Come out, get a little angry. Again, the Norwegian Dude, those, death. Those mode. two guys are going to put us on points tonight. Well, I hope so. I hope so. Especially on the power play. I mean, for the love of the game, I need both McDavid and Dry Saddle to get a power play point tonight. <laughs> strictly for the love of the game you and me both I'm maybe tyler, multiples and tyler too <laughs> i'm telling you man that is gonna be i told some guys at the game i was talking to them about betting like a couple of my buddies and i was like i'm gonna retire off that bet this year like mcdavid and dry settle combined to each get a power play point tonight is paying plus 145 forget about it I'm already spending my earnings. It's not just an assist or a goal either. It's just a point. Just a point. I was surprised actually that it was positive odds. Uh, shout out to our friends at Betway, by the way. I was surprised that it was not going to last for odds. long though. No, no, no. That's why we got to take advantage. Make hay while the sun I, is shining. So, that dry sidle over a point and a half in the playoffs lasted a long, long, long time on that, that run. True. And <laughs> I think true. this is going to be around. And Depending also the thing the that's the thing that's stunning to me is on. So I did this bet on Saturday and it paid plus one fifteen, and then I did it tonight and it's plus one forty five. It's moving the wrong way. <laughs> well, take the it. right way. Uh, there's three of us on here, by the way, listen to BLT bets on Wednesdays <laughs> for more of our degenerate behavior. All right. Um, anything else? So well, let's just wrap up with a quick score prediction against the Sabres. I'm going to say four, two win empty netter, not happening. That's just a clean puck line. win. that's what I'm going to say, Liam. Well, for the love of the game, I might be hoping for an empty net goal too. <laughs> and the power play goal, but, uh, I'm going to go with, I'll go six. Uh, I'll go five two Oilers with an empty net. Woo, Dan. I'm going seven two Oilers, no empty net. Little touchdown for Dan. Rick. I like a nice, uh, nice six one tonight. Tyler. I'm gonna say uh, five two as well. Ooh, no, I'm gonna empty say net? six two. Six two. They're getting a sixth one. Damn it. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you just need all the insurance. Five two and four two. You just need all the insurance you can get, which is exactly what 
Our friends at Cornerstone Insurance are happy to provide auto, residential, commercial life insurance, anything you need. They have it available for you at cornerstoneins.ca. Cornerstoneins.ca. Get a quote, submit a claim, do everything you need to right there on the website. And I see they got a little pop-up, 4.9 rating on Google. Come on. Doesn't get better than that. Let's go. Cornerstone Insurance, cornerstoneins.ca. Another couple of housekeeping items. Dan, I apologize. Brad Malone has been loaned back to the Condors. In his place, Marcus Niemelainen will be joining the squad. Go ahead, Dan. Can I just say a quick word? It's not so much a eulogy or a eugoogly for uh, for Mr. Malone as it is that I'm glad that they are bringing up a Niemelainen in his place because Brad Malone seemed to be the only player on Saturday night that was willing to go around and rock the body. And so I'm hoping that Niemelainen joins this party and continues to rock the body. That's kind of what I wrote in my the news item about this move yesterday on the site, I kind of wrote like, listen, I'm not expecting Marcus Niemelainen to come up and save the defense or level it up to a a spot where we're just like, wow, look at what's happening. But what I am expecting is that if you are a winger coming down the wing and you've got your head down, that he is going to demolish you. And that's going to give guys a little bit more space. It's going to make the forwards have to think twice on the four check. I think that there's some stuff to like here about Nima line and getting recalled, even though he's not going to play huge minutes. Tyler, do you think it makes a difference or no? Um, I don't know. Like making a difference, I think is a little bit of a grand statement for a guy who's coming in as the seventh defenseman, but I do like the move as a whole. Um, you know, it, when you have D men right now who are struggling, I think it's good to have a guy who you can just throw over the boards. He had a good training camp too. So, you know, maybe the results will be better than I expect. Um, but it, I think it's just nice to have that seventh D man in there to lessen the workload on everyone else, especially when a handful of them are struggling. That's also true. But I just like, I think it's like you said earlier, guys were too soft against Calgary. Yeah. Nobody's hitting. We don't have to worry about that from Nemo Linen. He's going to be physical. Yeah. He's going to wear down the forwards a little bit. I got to think that helps Rick. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree there, man. You, you, you know what those types of hits can do. And I don't think he goes out of his way too much to, uh, to try and find them. So he doesn't put himself out of position. They kind of just sort of happen naturally, which is a, a it's kind of a skill. So yeah, no, I, I, I like what he brings and you're right. It does kind of ease up on what everyone else has to do. Well, yeah. I've, I played a lot of online defensemen on mm-hmm. EA NHL. And if there's anything I know, it's that you have one opportunity as a defenseman on every break in to get that hit. And Nima Linen is just that guy that can go out and get it. He's he's, he is that guy. And like you said, Rick, he's not a player that finds his way out of position that often. So that's nice. And again, I'm not saying I expect the world out of Marcus Nima Linen. that's not what I'm saying. But what I do expect is that he's going to inject a different flavor of defense on a, on a group. But yeah, he, group he brings something kind of that we don't have. So it stands out. So it does kind of, maybe it does seem like it's a little more, um, it means a little bit more because he brings something that we just don't have. Liam, what's your take? Uh, I think, I don't think he's going to do anything too special, but I like what Rick just said. It's like something we don't have at all, right? He's just a lot different. But one thing I like about having a seventh defenseman is maybe it gives you a bit more flexibility on the blue line to try different plays together, maybe in game scenarios, rather than you can see who actually works with who, like, We've seen the we've spoke about it already. Like the Bouchard and Murray thing doesn't seem to work defensively. So does Bouchard work better with Nima Linen now? Or like is Murray better with Barry or something like that? You know, I think I like that idea of it is just being able to move your defenders around and try and find the perfect pair for each other. I just want him to hit somebody. That's really what I want to do. I want to see him blow someone up. It's gonna make me happy. And I guarantee, well, I don't guarantee. I guarantee with Dan's money, that's probably going to happen. That's what I say. Um, looking around the Pacific a little bit, Vancouver, we talked about just being terrible. I just kind of want to know, have you guys been watching anything so far in the first week? And if so, what's your first impressions is just kind of what's going on around the league. Who's impressed you. You can stick within the division if you want. I'm going to look at Vegas to start and say, I'm just, I'm a little bit surprised to see that. They've started off three and zero, ten goals, four or five against. A little bit surprising given that they've got, I don't even know who's playing net for them. Aiden Hill, I think. Thompson. But they've been a little bit surprising for me. 
Yeah, actually, that's that's the one that jumps off page to me. Three and zero heading into their game tonight against the Calgary Flames, and all of a sudden it's like, oh boy, are we gonna have to worry about the Vegas Golden Knights this season? And I'll admit, I didn't have them as a playoff team. I, I I still question if they can keep this up all year, especially with we know what we know about a few of their guys and their injury histories. But Bruce Cassidy is still a pretty decent coach. I think he's one of those guys who you don't bring him in to be your coach for five, six years anymore. I think the word on him is kind of you bring him in for one or two years and he's going to get damn good results from your team. And, you know, now I'm a little bit concerned that he might just do that this year with Vegas. Liam? Uh, probably the Bruins. I feel like I, well, I didn't think the Bruins were going to be any good this year. Now they're three and zero to start the year, scoring a lot of goals, five, six, and five, and against Washington, Arizona, and Florida, like they're doing that without a lot of key players in the lineup. So I guess the Bruins for me as a team, I'm surprised how well they've come out of the gates. Dan, anybody surprising you? Uh, I've actually been surprised and watched more of the Montreal Canadiens than I thought I ever would. Uh, they beat the Leafs and they beat the Penguins this week. Uh, I thought I was going to see more goonery from them so far than I did for the hockeyfights.com angle, but they've been a, a pretty good team otherwise. So uh, really looking forward to Arbor Jacob's debut here as an NHL Goomba. He's uh, he's a guy to watch. Rick. <laughs> No, I'm sticking with what I said earlier that I wasn't too worried about the Oilers. And it's just too small of a sample size for me so far. Um, I've been a little bit uh, impressed with the, uh, with the Rangers, but that might be a, a, personal, a personal reason as to why I've uh, enjoyed maybe a couple of their wins so far. Oh, for the love of the game. Yes, you know it. <laughs> God, I just I love the game. <clears throat> love the game. I think it's still too early. I still don't think, you know, I don't think Vegas is is there. Um, yeah, I just, I'm not too worried yet. <laughs> know who else loves the game, Tyler? Our friends at Twig and Berries. Hello. They've got the ODR collection available. They, they got the hoodies. They got the tees. If you need some undies, nutsack underwear, very comfortable, very supportive. Exactly what you need for a winter season. Head on over to twigandberries.ca. Use the promo code NATION15. Get a little discount on your order. Or if you're out in St. Albert, pop in the shop. Go check them out in person. You might even see Tyler there. He might be trying on nutsack undies and you may even get a fashion show. It could happen. It could happen. Uh, we are going to kick off a new segment here because we're going to start some new stuff since we're going to twice a week going forward. The season is underway. Tyler's got a little bit of a word association game that he wants to play with us. And I'm excited about it. We're going to kick off this for our friends at Canada Snowboard. Of course, that event is coming up on December 10th at Commonwealth Stadium. You're going to want to see it. It's a big air contest. Tyler and I are going. We decided yesterday we're going to be dates for this event. We're going to have a good time. We're going to watch it. We're going to enjoy it. Tickets are available at Ticketmaster. Go check it out. It's a cool event. I promise you're going to want to be a part of it. Our friends at Canada Snowboard and Explore Edmonton for putting it all together. Tyler? Yeah. What do you got? Word association. All right. So that means you can give one word answers to each of these. We're mm-hmm. going to go in alphabetical order every time to keep the rapid fire style of this one. So it's going to go bag milk, Dan, Liam, Rick, and then me. Cause I asked the question. All right. Okay. We good. Yeah. Your first one, Jack Campbell's first two games as an oiler bag milk. Down the stretch. We come. I don't know. Is that more? That's more than one word, that's but I'm pumped. Words. Love it. Dan. Shaky. Uh, average. How dare you, Rick? Meh. <laughs> I was going to say meh too. <laughs> meth or meh? Meh. Or meh? Shout out to meth. Uh, allegedly, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one we got. Going back to the top with bag milk. One word to describe Saturday's Battle of Alberta. Soho. Annoying. Bad. <laughs> Bad. Yeah. What'd you say, Rick? Shitty. I'm going to say mid. Oh, you. The graphic for this is going to be amazing on socials. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be fantastic. How dare you put your, your, your Gen Z terminology on this podcast? Battle of mid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> First two games of Dylan Holloway's career. Expected. 
average? Uh, uh, under underwhelming. A good one. Um, meh. <laughs> 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 it's it's nothing, nothing, very no, nothing. I'm gonna say unlucky. Um, he's had some bad luck. You know that shot that the the yeah. one flames goal went off his stick in a weird way. Unlucky. Those giveaways. Yeah. He, there was a moment I was doing some research yesterday. He leads the NHL in turnovers per 60 or giveaways yep. per 60. Yeah. Yep. Darn. Just one of those one of those starts. That's welcome to the NHL right there. He'll figure it out. All right. I'm, I'm loving this segment, by the way. This is good. <laughs> I'm going to read you guys a headline from Oilers Nation today, and you're going to give me one your, your instant one-word reaction. <laughs> What would have happened if the Oilers lost the McDavid lottery and drafted Jack Eichel? Bag milk? Cannibalism. <laughs> Anarchy. Disaster. No. <laughs> I thought you were going to go with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say depression. Um, I love the idea, though, that I'm not talking about that. I love the idea, though, that there's a bunch of Sabres fans out there that have 97 McDavid jerseys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out to you. It's like I'm all the people who are at the draft this year wearing yeah. Shane Wright jerseys. <laughs> I was going to say, and there's probably, a, there's probably people on that team that had McDavid yeah. jerseys ready to go. <laughs> all right. And uh, I feel like all four of those were negative, so we'll end on a high note. The Oilers' power play being at 50%. Bag milk. Sexy. Unreal. Very good. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Three words. McDavid-esque. Mwah. That's my word. Oh, wow. chef's kiss. Mwah. Kiss the microphone. All right. There we go. That's a wrap on our first attempt at doing word association. <laughs> need to go buy a thesaurus. You have to change the order every week about Tyler so we cannot get into our rhythms. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> and you know what? I would also, if you're listening to this, you went, well, that segment went okay. <laughs> send, some, send some, some stuff ideas. to Tyler as well. Send or, some ideas to Tyler. Or you can answer those five questions yourself and send it to us on social media. Jack Campbell's first started, or first two games as an Oiler. Saturday's BOA, Holloway's start, world where the Oilers get Eichel instead of McDavid, and the power play. Yep. I think this has potential. Snowboard. Thank you, Snowboard Canada. That is a segment that you would be proud of. And we took a leap, a big air leap with that segment. There you go. There you go. Huh? It was down the ramp. Down the ramp, off the jump, stuck the landing. (laughs) Get the tickets for the Big Air event that's coming up at Commonwealth Stadium on December 10th at Ticketmaster. Go on over to Ticketmaster. Get those today. I promise you're going to have a good time. You might even see me and Tyler there. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Just before we wrap up, just the first Tuesday episode back. We're going to keep these tight probably on Tuesdays until we get a little bit more going. Any kind of final thoughts on the first, I guess, first impressions from week one? Dan? Well, I, I have to say my first impression of Liam's fish tank is underwhelming. We'll have to put a post of that up on the, uh, the old social oh, guy. Uh, you went from what, a 200 gallon tank to eight? A little, little 20 gallon with Steve <laughs> and Spike. There is two fish. The best That's awesome. There's two fish in there. One of them's orange and the other one's black and you can never see them. So it's just like this one fish in there. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You didn't want to Sorry, name them after like an oiler? oiler? Huh? You didn't want to name them after like an oiler or something? Well, my girlfriend hates them. So I said, the okay, well, the you fish. can. The oilers or the fish? The fish, the fish. So I said, the she fish. Name oh, yeah, she got beef against the fish. They sometimes don't smell very good. Is it uh, so them or the water the that you're fish? refusing to change for them? <laughs> well, I mean, the water wouldn't smell if it wasn't for the fish. So therefore, <laughs> it's the fish. Uh huh. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Liam, first impressions on week one. Um, just got to be better. I, you know, two games in, whatever, I guess, but Calgary I played the Stanley Cup champions and then played us and are now 2-0 and 
we're one on one and we haven't been up to either game. So I think we just got to be better. And tonight, I think they will with a power play goal, an empty net, power play point from Dry Saddle and McDavid, and maybe two assists from Dry Saddle. What a specific for the love prediction. of the game. <laughs> yeah. For the love of the game. <laughs> uh, Rick, first impressions on week one. Uh, you know, not a great start. It's just two games in. Uh, I expect a lot to be different tonight, though. Tyler? Liam, just going on you uh, naming your fish weird names. I have a friend who got a cat last year and my friend's name is Connor. And, you know, he was thinking about what to name the cat. And one of our other friends had a genius idea of name the cat Leon. And then you guys are Connor and Leon together. So that's how my friend ended up with a wow. cat named after Leon Dreisaitl. Um, I always love seeing people who like their dogs are named like Smitty and shit like that. I think it's so funny. <laughs> there's a, there's a house. There's somewhere yeah. I house it and they named all that. They had two dogs and two cats. And I can't remember exactly what they're all called, but one is called Ebby. One is called Nuge. I think one's called Halsey. And I, the other one's like something after McDavid. They named all their animals after Oilers players. Fantastic. Well, that's why I want to congratulate the Sarah Valleys for naming Frank after my dog. <laughs> I thought that was a very bold choice. <laughs> it, was, it was awfully a nice to honor you though. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was really nice. Very, very, very kind of them. Uh, just to tail Liam a little bit, if Ryan Nugent Hopkins could pick up an assist at any point of the game, I'd be super pumped on that. And maybe, if I'm feeling frisky, if Leon and Evander Kane could also, if they could both score, just for no particular reason at all, that'd be fantastic. I, uh, I, shout out to our friends at Betway. Go ahead. I want to talk about your boy Nuge a little bit, actually. I, I wrote a okay. little thing at Oilers Nation uh, this week about you know, they, him getting going, I think, could be the key to them being the best offense in the NHL. Like if Nuge yes. gets rolling and Nuge is a 20 plus goal third line center who's got a couple of solid wingers with him, like that could do wonders for this forward group. And that's why I think they got it. And it's interesting. I didn't know this. Nuge and Hopkins, his most popular or most consistent line mate at five on five this season has actually been Yesa Pugliarvi, and the results haven't been that bad. I think they should be riding Pugliarvi and Nugent Hopkins together on that third line and try to see if they can click after a few games and give this team a third line that can legitimately consistently score. He, you're 100% right. Nugent needs to, like, what we need for this team to take a next step, and I'm not saying it's all in one player, but, like, if Nugent Hopkins can get back to the guy from 2018-19 or 2019-20, the 28, the 20-plus goal guy, then that's going to do a world of good. Like I want nothing more than Tyler to be texting me on a semi-regular basis that just says low snap, one leg fist pump. Like that's the, the Nugent Hopkins trifecta when it comes to a goal. So a hundred percent, if he gets going and gets that confidence back and gets his shot back. Yeah. Well, that could be dangerous. Doesn't, doesn't that tandem pair well with a Dylan Holloway just for the sense that you've got the defense and Jesse Pugliarvi, the defensive responsibility and Jesse Pugliarvi and Nuge as well. Like to me, you're right, Tyler. I think that you got to pair, you got to look at your tandems and your pairings, but you've got to have a nice compliment to that. Cause to me, Warren Fogel isn't a good compliment to that. I just quickly, while we're talking about this too, the numbers. So at five on five, when Pugliarvi and Nugent Hopkins are on the ice, the shots for percentage is 43.75%, which I know isn't great, but Nugent Hopkins, when he's been on the ice without Pugliarvi, is down at 36%. Pugliarvi without Nuge is 22%. So these two guys are actually putting up better numbers together than they are apart from each other. Again, like I think it's a duo that would have potential. Yeah, Who's I agree. And if, most if popular Dylan... left winger. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to know who's playing on the left. Who's Nuge's most popular left winger? It's actually Hyman. Oh. Nugent and Hyman play really well together. They obviously have chemistry on the PK. Uh, they almost found a way to make it work against Calgary to get something going offensively. But if Dylan Holloway, to Dan's point, can kind of settle in, get himself a little bit more comfortable, get a couple of at bats that, you know, makes him feel like, oh, fuck, I belong here. You know, that line could be dangerous. And if you have a third line that could pump some goals in, that is a major difference. So yeah. then Tyler... Tyler, in that scenario, then are you play you're playing Ryan McLeod on the wing or are you, you're not putting him on the fourth line? I yeah, actually I don't hate the idea of putting him on the wing either. Like if your fourth line, let's say you're going eleven and seven. If your fourth line is, you know, Shore and Fogel, and then you're going with 
a top line, let's say McDavid, Kane, and Yamamoto like they are tonight. And then you can go Dreisaitl, Hyman, and McLeod. And then you can go Holloway, Nuge, and Fogel. Or Dreisaitl, Hyman, Holloway and go Nuge, McLeod, and Pugliarvi. I think I fucked up somewhere there. No, that's right. I, I, <laughs> I was following. <laughs> There's potential there, but we need some guys to get going, I think yeah. is the point. Yeah, like and it also needs some more games to be played. Let's play more yep. games. Yep. So we got a big week here again, just to wrap this up for Weathers Nation Radio. We've got the Sabres tonight, the Hurricanes on Thursday, and the St. Louis Blues, a 2 p.m. matinee on Saturday. I Dude, thought it was I thought it was interesting to see we're already getting a 2 p.m. game, but yeah. The nice thing too, for just us selfishly recording these between today and our next episode, there's two games. Then between that episode and the next one, there's two games. And then between that one and the next episode, there's two games. So we'll always have these two game samples to be breaking down. That's really nice. That is really, really nice. Any final thoughts, boys, before we wrap it up? No. Liam. Wait. Go Oilers. Go. (laughs) One word to describe our performances on today's podcast. (laughs) Meh. <laughs> mid. Mid. It was, it was very mid. <laughs> very, very <laughs> mid. Uh, hey, I don't even know way. what that means. What does mid mean? Mid. Average. Middle? Like we are middle. Middle. average. That's yeah, it. Mediocre. Sorry. I'm now that I'm in my mid 20s, I'm not down with the Maybe kids you anymore. <laughs> you just <laughs> use the damn word. I I wasn't sure. I just said it because he said it. I'm a follower. Oh, you just said mid 20s, though. Yeah, you've figured it out already. Oh, there right you go. Right in the let's end this. Let's end it. I can't talk anymore. You're aging out, Liam. So. Yeah, for you, need a guy, the banana. you do. You need some <laughs> potassium. Uh, for our friends at DoorDash, Oodle Noodle, Cornerstone Insurance, Twig and Berries, and Canada Snowboard, I want to say thank you for listening to Weather's Nation Radio. By the way, we need more podcast reviews, but bitches, maybe not today. You know, maybe just <laughs> wait until Friday. <laughs> After we get back to the normal schedule on Friday and then leave a review. It's or, too small of a sample size to judge today's. Too it's small of a sample size to small judge today's. <laughs> exactly. Or give us five stars and then just say the two episodes sucked. I don't care. Just give or us, give us five, five stars and do your <laughs> one word association. <laughs> yes. How did we do with one word? Uh, I don't know if Apple Podcasts allows you to swear or not. There you go. <laughs> Jordan Ash, Noodle Noodle, Cornerstone Insurance, Twig and Berries, Canada Snowboard, Weather's Nation Radio for all the boys. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back on Friday after two big wins. Let's go, Weathers. Show to Ash. Wish Dan a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dan. Listening birthday, to Oilers Dan. Nation Radio, delivered by DoorDash. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.